Goose, where are you? Oh, there you are. Hey, let's talk about how much we love Affinity Designer for the iPad for interior design. Let's go. So I was working on some environmental graphics from home and I wanted to be able to work on the sofa. Very important to my workflow. I tried to use Illustrator for the iPad and it wasn't quite working out. Right, Goose? But then I tried Affinity Designer and not only was I able to make the environmental graphics, but I discovered so many more use cases for interior design. In love. Today, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why you will love Affinity Designer for the iPad as an interior designer. Number one, pixel and vector workspaces. In all the apps that I use regularly before finding Affinity Designer, they were either really good at raster or really good at vector. Affinity Designer is the best vector design app on the iPad. And then the ability to have pixel alongside that just gives you so many options. For instance, you can do a sketch that's raster or done in the pixel workspace. Then you can go and trace over it using the vector tools right within the same document. You could draw in vector and then go back over it in the pixel workspace and use tools that are better suited for raster workflow like texture brushes. If you've been doing this very long, you know that raster or pixel based drawings and vector based drawings both have their advantages and disadvantages. At least in terms of drawing, I think one of the major advantages of raster or pixel based is that it just feels a lot more like traditional media. Now, a second advantage is that photographic images also are natively raster based. The disadvantage with pixel is this. Oh, well that's actually pretty cool. 7.58 million? What the f Now, if you're coming from traditional media, you're probably gonna find vector drawing to be a bit weird, but it does allow you to do some really cool things. And that is because a lot of the workflows are very non-destructive. And the other major advantage that it has over pixel-based drawing is that it's resolution independent. I'm in love. Number two, infinite desktop and multiple artboards. So what really makes the pixel-based and vector-based workspaces shine is the fact that you have a virtually infinite desktop. On top of that, you can have multiple artboards. In terms of pixel-based, this is great because you can set up a series of artboards to basically be like your sketchbook. Or you can do sketches, you can do drawings, or you can just keep your reference material all within the same document. There's no need to have to go to the Files app and look for your work. There are also some real benefits in terms of Vector. With Vector, it's all about being able to draw on that desktop. This is great because it allows you to do things like set up complicated perspectives with multiple vanishing points outside of the artboard. Simpler yet, it allows you to draw at one to one scale. I'm in love. Which brings us to number three, draw at one to one scale. When you're done with a drawing, you can easily go into the transform tools, divide by the scale factor, and put it back on your artboard, which forms your drawing. This is basically hacking it to do what AutoCAD does with model space and paper space, but instead of going back and forth and setting a scale on a separate tab, you're just doing it yourself and dividing by the scale factor. Surprisingly, it can be exceptionally hard to find good ways to do that on the iPad. I'm in love. Number four, once you spend the time making something, it's really great to have it available for you to use in your future work. And with Affinity Designer, the assets panel allows you to simply select the object and then press the button to save selection as an asset and then organize these into categories and subcategories. So next time you go to do a drawing and you remember that you have an asset that would be perfect for that, you don't have to redo it or go find it in File Explorer. You can just simply go into the panel and drag it into your drawing. Love. Number five, the ability to create symbols. So say you spend time drawing a very beautiful dining chair in plan and then you want to copy that and put it around a dining table let's say it's a really big dining table and you have like 12 copies well if you want to make a change all you have to do is update one dining chair and with symbols and all of the other dining chairs around the table they'll update as well <laughs> number six built-in royalty-free stock images I remember back in the day, I used to have to scour the internet looking for royalty-free images to use in my projects. It always seemed like 99% of those images were like 
bad senior pictures, which not only is that not useful, but it's also pretty awkward. Luckily today, there's access to plenty of royalty-free, professionally taken stock photos. My favorite is probably Unsplash. There's also Pixabay and Pexels. And guess what? In Affinity Designer for the iPad, these three libraries are built into a stock photo panel so you can easily search and drag in images without having to leave the app. Number seven, create effects. And also, apply them, copy paste them, and save them as styles. This is extremely useful to me as an interior designer because I can develop effects for things like furniture, glass, wood, and then I can go back and reuse them later or I can copy and paste them onto other elements that use them around the room. And this is a lot easier than having to paint or hand render those effects on top. Love, love, love. Number eight, the fill tool and the transparency tool. These are two of my favorite things about Affinity Designer. The fill tool allows you not only to put a gradient on top of any vector object, but it allows you to adjust it right on top of the object, which is amazing. And the same thing for the transparency tool. I'm in love. Number nine, the export workspace. I can't believe more software doesn't have something like this. One of my biggest issues in most drawing software is then getting my final work out into the formats that I want to without spending a lot of time. In Affinity Designer, there's basically two ways to get your work out using the export workspace. The first is to just select which artboards that you want to export and then the file format and then export them to the folder of your choosing. The other way is to create slices and these can be applied to objects even if they're not on artboards and then you can select those the same way and export whatever you want in the file format that you choose without even having to create an artboard. Love. Finally, number 10, and this one is huge, and that is Affinity Designer is truly cross-platform. So the drawings that you create on your iPad, if you own the Windows or Mac versions, you can open them there and keep working. And if you want to start working on your iPad again, you can open those files on your iPad as well.